to-do lists. Um, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and I've been getting questions on my to-do list. How do I keep track of bugs and everything that I want to do in a game? I talked about this, but it's been more than a year. So um, let's dive into that topic for today. Also, I got two new interesting and cool features for Regulated City. Um, I want to try something new. I'm going to show you those features, but also uh, talk about the logic behind them. How do they work and how do I make them work and how do I make them look good and all that stuff. Let's see how that goes after the intro. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this channel is to show you all the work, love and attention that goes into games, but hopefully also inspire others and um, maybe in a different way teach you a little bit about how certain things work in a game. Um, this year I want to try it as much as possible uh, to talk about new features, but also explain how I made them run and work. Not in a very technical way, we'll have that in Tech Talks when it's needed. The AI tech talk is still coming, talking about how I did all the AI, all that stuff. But I talked to a sponsor who was interested, uh, haven't heard back, so it's coming. Anyway, I want to give some information on how these things work in a very high level way. So uh, not very technical, but at least uh, you should be able to understand the logic, even if you have nothing to do with game development or, or games creation at all. If you're just a gamer, this should still give you a little bit of insight. If you're uh, more technical, you should maybe get inspired by how to do stuff like this in your own games. That's what we're gonna try. But first thing, um, as mentioned, the to-do list. I had some questions. Um, multiple people asked me about my to-do list and they know I use Trello, which is a free service. You can keep lists and track a bunch of things in there. Um, let me just show you how I use it for my project. Uh, in this case, Regulator City. So I use Trello, as just mentioned, it's free, trello.com, check it out. Um, you can't go wrong with it. There are many other ways to do it. This is just my explanation on how I do it. First list I create for a new project is my ideas list. This is pretty much random thoughts, random ideas, um, also name ideas. Uh, before I made this game Regulator City, I had to find a good fitting name. There's a bunch of them in here, ending with Regulator City. Uh, I just drop everything here and it's for uh, whenever I have new ideas or whenever I want to try something. Random ideas is just, this is actually some YouTube comments from one of you guys. Uh, I just paste them in here as well. Another one, random ideas. I go over these lists every now and then to see if there's something there that can still be added to the game as it is now in its current state. Um, game flow ideas. This was pretty much my design document. Uh, how should this game be played? What are the steps for the player? Um, pretty much random ideas and thoughts go in there. Then I have a new little list called big features. This is stuff that really needs to be added um, before we even release something. So uh, city building ideas, alpha leader special powers. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. And also Dylan's to-do list, which is pretty much a little uh, checklist of uh, various little assignments I give him and uh, we check them off so we can keep track of all the stuff he's been doing. I actually only started with this checklist halfway into his internship. Uh, it was a little bit messy before that. That was all on me and uh, now we have a good track list and checklist. So we can now check everything he's done and there's even a lot more he's done. And sometimes I add a little uh, example of what I mean. I just grab these from Google say I want a water tower, something like this, or stuff like that. This is a city edge I created first, so create something, create a couple more of these, uh, things like that. And the fist, and I'll get to that in a minute. Cool new feature. Then we have the to-do list, um, pretty much the most important one. This is where all the ideas are placed that really should be done. Um, these are not bugs. They can be bugs, but they're usually uh, tweaks or changes or missing elements that I think should be in the game. Not everything will be uh, done. Sometimes I add a, something to it. To, sometimes I add a feature to this to-do list, but then I don't touch it for weeks or months and the game evolves in a slightly different direction. And these things will then pretty much uh, get archived and not be added because they don't fit the new style of the game anymore. So the to-do list is pretty much everything I want to add to the game, uh, where the ID list is pretty much every random idea and thought I had. 
and might not even have uh, come up with a solution on how to implement it. So that's a bit of the difference between those. And then we have the bug list. Uh, this list, I just dump everything in here when I have a play session and something isn't working. I quickly just uh, write down what, what's going wrong or sometimes I attach a screenshot. Uh, these should be fixed before we release. These are very important. So um, that's the bug list. Right now it's very short, but I'm pretty sure it will start growing again pretty soon. And then all the other lists are pretty much um, updates. Right now the game isn't really active anywhere except for patrons. Every now and then um, on Friday I push an update and I just increase the uh, version number and then create a new list. This is also a little bit for me to track uh, what I can talk about in the devlogs, like these little devlog labels. Uh, working security cameras, we're going to talk about that in a minute. And Fist of Fury, going to talk about that in a minute. So those are the two highlighted features in this week that I want to talk about on the video. And then we have uh, a couple of the older lists, but eventually I will start archiving these lists. Like version 8 can now be gone, version 9 can also be gone. Uh, cleaning it all up a little bit and I'll probably be adding version 13 um, after recording this video So that's pretty much my to-do list. This is also where I grab any updates um, If a game is live and I do a weekly update or semi-weekly I'll also grab all these points and put them in a little list on a website or an update notice or message whatever So uh, it's good to keep track of all the things that are changing and um, that's pretty much my to-do list. And let's dive into the first new feature I've been adding to the game. This was already partly implemented. I think I mentioned it either last week or a few weeks ago. Security cameras, uh, you can turn them off, but if you don't, they will detect you. And that detection part wasn't in the game yet. I just didn't get around to uh, work on it. I didn't really feel like working on it. It's a very simple system to add though. So uh, let me just first show you and then uh, talk you through the process of how these things work in the game. Let's start with the level editor. Here you can see um, a security camera and this is the system that will deactivate them. There are a few other cameras because in the level editor you can place them um, at different interesting spots. And as soon as they detect you, um, there will be enemy reinforcement spawning at these uh, green spots here. At least that's the system for now. I'm still trying to come up with a better system. Uh, the other one is here. I'll have to figure out a better system because right now they come out of nowhere. So maybe I'll just make them teleport in or something weird like that. All right, let's just uh, first play the level a little bit uh, with the cameras on and then we'll notice that there will be a guy spawning over here as soon as we get detected. Let me just uh, go into the camera view. And as soon as the camera detects me, it will get a little yellow um, exclamation mark and uh, new guys will be spawning. There you go. Luckily, I have my defender over there. And uh, pretty much all the cameras uh, will do that until we uh, disable them. So let me quickly disable the camera. Security cameras are down. It won't uh, move anymore and we can now just move around here without getting uh, new bad guys on our neck. And yes, I know there's a little bug going on over here. There should be a mechanic, but he's somehow glitching out. Haven't figured out why yet. It's the only one that does it. All right, level editor done, uh, cameras are added. Now, how does this work code-wise? And this is where the new stuff, uh, I might just do this more often on this channel, new stuff, uh, talk about how certain things actually work. I think I wanted to always do this on the channel, but it's very hard to do every now and then. I don't want to go into technical stuff or uh, code stuff. That's, uh, you can learn a lot of coding everywhere else. There's a lot of uh, channels for that, a lot of books for it. I just want to show you the logic behind certain things in games. And um, sometimes it's very simple. Even this camera system, very simple. But if you have no idea where to even start making something like this, your mind can go into very uh, difficult directions even though there's a very simple solution. Let me just show you the code and the very simple solution. All right, step one, security camera. Every frame, every update, we check if the security cameras are still on in the world, if they are, and that's this little flag. Then we do our code. Um, we are very simple. We either turn like this or we turn like that. And as soon as that turn is done, so if we are like this and then we move like that, at that point, we will create a spawn trigger. 
um, at our target location. So this is a bullet. Uh, originally it was a trigger, hence the stupid name spawn trigger is a bullet. Uh, I will rename that eventually. Um, let's see, then we are being created. The only thing we need to know is how big are we and where are we located? So that's this part. And uh, we then find our nearest spawn spot, which are those green things on the level editor I just showed you. Um, we record that and we do it in this position as soon as we are created so that we don't have to do that later on and we are ready to go and set as soon as the player steps into us. So in the update, every world update, we calculate our field of view, which also creates um, or adds danger to the various nodes that the AI used to navigate. And we also add danger to those nodes where we are located, which means um, in theory, the AI knows it's a dangerous spot. The camera is looking over here. We should try to avoid it. Now, as soon as the player steps into this bullet or runs into this bullet, even though it's a static bullet, um, it will jump into this uh, struck me event and the spawn trigger will die, but it will also spawn our enemies at the target we already um, found during the initialization. And we also, and this is an important one, uh, give a little notification to our owner, which is the camera, of course, and the camera will then get this one. And the camera will then um, get this last child done event and it will turn itself into a little alerted one mode. And that means a little uh, yellow exclamation mark and a little delay. We'll keep watching at the direction we were watching because something's going on right there. Very suspicious. And um, that's pretty much how the security camera operates. Um, secret hidden invisible bullets. Um, usually these are triggers, which is pretty much the same thing, but there's a lot less code involved in triggers because bullets usually have a trajectory and movement and variation and rotation and all that stuff. While a trigger is usually just one rectangular area or a circle, it's also possible if you want to do that. Um, so right now it's a bullet, but I'll probably move it over to the trigger system. I just had to add some more code to it to make sure all these things um, signal back to the camera. It's a very simple system and that brings me to the next cool feature I've been added to the game which is probably even more simpler because it's a lot of visual stuff. Um, let me first show you what it is and then we'll um, talk a little bit about that code. Do let me know in the comments below if you like me to um, keep doing this or do it more often. Talk a little bit about the logic behind certain things uh, that I put in my games. I can't do it about everything I think I guess, uh, but every now and then this should be possible and I think it might be helpful for other game developers but also gamers wanting to know, how, to know how a certain game works or how games work. Things like this, they work the same in uh, all type of games. It doesn't matter if it's a triple A billion dollar game or a very uh, simple indie game that's made in a weekend for a game jam. This is just common stuff that you do in games to make things happen. Moving on to the next cool thing. So when you start a new game in Regulator City, you get to pick one of these um, alpha leaders. And we're gonna pick this one with the fist up high. And um, let me just show you what uh, the purpose is of picking one of these. Let's just go over to the scrapyard. All right, this isn't different from anything, uh, but we now have a special power. Let me activate that special power called Fury Fist. And as you notice, everything keeps moving because this menu is not pausing the game. It's just uh, slowing down everything. Fury Fist, and we now have a special power that's, um, well, here we go. That's a special power. And uh, we can do it a couple of times now because there's no limit on it because I'm still testing stuff. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a pretty cool fist. Now, not all characters are gonna have weapons like this. We might have one of the characters just be very good at healing. So every time one of your enemy or one of your soldiers dies, you get to heal him very quickly for a couple of times per session or something like that. Um, but we also have uh, the, the girl with the yellow hair has a bionicle eye. So maybe it will shoot lasers everywhere. Cool stuff like that, you know, very common stuff for games. So um, how, how do these fists work? Let me show you. First of all, this is the fist. Um, originally DMAC drew it uh, only half this size. So uh, like this, but I figured this was a lot more impressive. So I doubled the uh, image. 
I know this is a sin for some people who love pixel art because you shouldn't do stuff like that and scale pixel art. Uh, but yeah, I don't care. Uh, this is still very impressive. It's gonna be something special. So it doesn't really matter that every pixel is actually uh, four pixels. And maybe I'll just uh, smooth it out a little bit over time. But for now it works. This uh, black blob, by the way, is the shadow we use to show where the fist is gonna be landing. So uh, that's the image. And then what pretty much happens with the fist is that it's a special effect. It's nothing more. It has no interaction with anything. Um, as soon as the player presses the button to fire off these fists, we create a bunch of special effects, which are images that drop down to the screen and move up. The thing is that as soon as they land on the ground, we, um, there they are again, create a trigger which damages the enemy. And as you can see, this means it only damages the enemies and not the player. I should rename this to a uh, non-player because it will also damage cars and anything else that happens to listen to triggers like this. It will then uh, do some screen shaking. It will play the big sound of explosion and it will then create a bunch of smoke around it, even more smoke and some debris, everything uh, scattering. And that's all that happens. It's a special effects. The player triggers it. It works. It does its thing. Nobody cares about it, but it creates this trigger. And triggers, as mentioned, are very important because everything in the game world will detect this trigger. We'll see if it's being, we'll see if it's colliding with this trigger. And if it does, they will respond to that trigger. So um, very simple code. Then of course the fist goes back up or it smashes a couple of times and then it goes back up. And then when it's off screen, it will die and uh, disappear. Very simple stuff, uh, but the effects are so satisfying and cool. So of course, without that special effects, it's just a trigger happening. Uh, you press a button and something explodes on the ground and enemies will die. And that's what the special effects comes into place. Uh, it just makes everything more special, which is pretty much the reason it's there. Um, simple stuff, uh, but the effects are so cool and sometimes uh, the most cool stuff is very simple to implement. So why not implement it into your game? But that's also it for this week's video. Um, like I said, let me know in the comments below if you like me to talk more about game logic or logic behind certain things happening. If you have certain questions for Regulate City on how certain stuff happens and works based on all the videos I've been doing on the game, let me know because maybe I can squeeze those topics into uh, these devlogs. I don't mind. I will also do tech talks, which will be more technical and show you much more code and go more in depth into what's happening on certain things. But not everything is a tech talk. Sometimes it's just logic, game logic, and just logical thinking on how to do something like that. 60 times a second, we draw pictures on the screen and they are drawn in locations and things based on all the rules behind the screen. So game development is very simple. You just have to figure out how to do it which pretty much goes for everything. All right, I think this should be uh, the end of the video. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Like, subscribe, comment below. Bye.